Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I am with my friends uh, and co-workers. You might have seen Greg before in my previous video. This is Graham. And uh, we just kind of wanted to just finalize the Hurricane Irma thing. There's been a lot of other uh, natural disasters, I'll say, going on recently. Um, but we wanted to kind of close this chapter. That way we can get uh, back to um, some tech stuff. But you may recall in the last video, we, Greg and I had made a, a wager prior to Irma. Now, I had reached out to you guys and I had said, uh, asked you if you could just uh, tell me who won our little wager. And if, uh, if you didn't see the last video, it's going to be right up here. So just click that link. And uh, also I'll have it in the show notes below. But the wager was... We bet a week before the hurricane that if the hurricane was going to hit us or not hit us. And she bet that it wasn't going to hit us at all. I bet obviously it was going to hit us, obviously. And we didn't do any specifics. And the gentleman right here, he, Graham, he was there. He was the, our judge. Um, he understood the rules. We just, we just said it was going to hit us or not hit us. And I still believe it hit us. Graham was appointed judge, but I'll be honest with you. I don't actually, I don't recall him being appointed as judge. Um, but he is the deciding factor. But before we get into who won, who didn't win, did we have a hurricane, did we not? I first just wanted to talk about whether or not you should leave during a hurricane. In my particular case, we have people from up north calling and saying, you gotta get out of there, you gotta get out of there, you gotta leave, you gotta leave. But all three of us actually stayed for the hurricane and we each have our own individual reasons why we decided to stay. I am not originally from Florida, I'm from Pennsylvania. And of course, having family members call you, leave, leave, leave. You have to keep in mind that we all have our own individual reasons why we want to stay. In my particular case, this is my home. This is my job. This is my life. So that is the reason that I decided to stay. In addition, I didn't believe that an actual hurricane would come through. <laughs> as the as the best said, yes. <laughs> um, another reason why I didn't leave is, I don't know if you saw in the news, a bunch of people evacuating. It, where are you going to evacuate to? The hurricane's literally going up the state where you're going up also. So it's pretty much just chasing you. Uh, and, and that actually ties into what happened with you during the hurricane, right? Originally, my, my parents were out of town. So um, they have, of course, their home as well as their business. Um, with that, they really kind of needed to have somebody home just to check on everything. I have my workplace, too, to check out as well. Um, even if I was to leave, I'd really have to go to another state. Um, just because we had no idea where the hurricane would exactly hit. But for you, your initial reaction for the hurricane was to actually go to uh, the West Coast. Isn't yeah. that correct? Yeah, so there was, there was an opportunity to go to the West Coast. As soon as the hurricane shifted over to the West Coast, there really was no reason to go there because it was maybe going to be worse, worse off there than, uh, than at home. So just logistically, we, it made sense really just, just to stay and kind of ride it out and hope for the best. I don't know if you recall, but uh, the governor had said, if you stay, you may die. This is clearly a life-threatening situation. Essentially, that's that, that's what he said. Like yeah, <laughs> he it's... pretty much scared the bejesus out of all of us. <laughs> yeah, and also on the, it, they also were calling it a nuclear hurricane, which I've never seen in my 22 years of experience of living here. <laughs> them calling it a nuclear hurricane, so I still think that they were doing it like how news does everything now is make it a little more flashier than it actually is. Obviously, it was a terrible hurricane, but I still think they were glorifying and being a little bit hyperbolic for the hurricane itself. I, I, I would totally agree, and Graham, I think you would agree that for every hurricane, they pretty much just uh, get us as scared as possible <laughs> exactly, so that they can get the ratings. Um, that being said, Hurricane Irma's something or other, maybe it was a tropical storm, did go through our area, um, and it uh, people are still actually without power, yeah. and we're about, I don't know, 13, 14 days out now. So, yeah, 13. Yeah, so, so the fact that 
um, that it did such damage to this particular area was actually quite shocking, to be honest with you, because uh, I, I actually got to go through Wilma, which was in 2005, and uh, when you would drive around with Wilma, it really looked like a war zone, and I didn't get that feeling uh, driving around. I mean, of course, we had debris, and we did have some damage here, but nothing uh, to the degree that, that Wilma was. Yeah, definitely Wilma is one of the worst hur uh, hurricane I've ever been through. So what was your experience um, after the difference between Wilma driving around and Irma driving around? For me, in my neighborhood with, with Wilma, we couldn't even get out of our neighborhood for about three days or so. Oh my just, just with so many trees down. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy! Oh, it, was, it was actually, it was, yeah, it was, it, was not, it was not good. Uh, we had enough supplies, I mean, it wasn't you know, not in the world or anything. But with this one, um, with Irma, pretty much the, the storm ended on Sunday night. And, and Monday morning, I was able to drive around, go get some lunch. Um, trees were down, of course. Some of the traffic lights were, were down, but nothing nothing ridiculous, I would say. Um, I did see a couple you know, branches that fell on cars, and, and I did see one, one tree that fell on the house in my neighborhood. Um, but nothing, no, no roofs gone, anything like that. So we, we definitely got very lucky compared to what it, what it could have been. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with with uh, Wilma, I remember, do, do you guys remember all the, the blue tents uh, oh or uh, oh, tarps every, every, everywhere? Every house. Every, every house was the, the blue tarp house. So, and, and not even just for a few days. I mean, I'm talking like months, months. Of, of blue tarps everywhere. So I really think we lucked out. I know, um, you know, I, I really feel for the people in the Caribbean. Yeah, um, awesome. so, yeah. yeah and, and even with uh, uh, Marie just, just going through, like with Puerto Rico, um, man, they just, they're really getting beat up and uh, my heart really goes out to them. Yeah, definitely. Um, but something with the difference of Hurricane Irma and Wilma I noticed, which is kind of shows by our whole society nowadays, is during Hurricane Wilma, we met all of our neighbors. All the neighbors came out. We like barbecued together. We all just we met neighbors we never knew existed. Pretty much, we just saw their houses. We saw them go to 100%. work and come home. This one, everyone just stayed in their house and just had their generators running and they did what they just stayed in the house and never came out. So I definitely felt a big difference in that. Also. The, that's the truth, and you have to keep in mind too that uh, communication is different now than it was in two thousand five. Everyone has smartphones now. In two thousand five, I still had a flip phone. Um, I, I, I really did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still had a flip phone, so communication was on a whole different level. And really, in 2005, you could just kind of only talk to each other and you didn't have the, the reach. That being said, uh, with Irma, I lost complete and utter yeah. total contact with everyone because I, I believe the cell towers were down. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a way to contact our, you know, our place of work. We didn't have a way to contact our, our friends and family. You probably saw in the in the previous videos that I was using something called Skyroam in order to at least get uh, texting access. But communication for this one was very hard. My in my house, I still have like a dark zone of cell service. I do still you? have cell service in my house. Luckily, wow. I do have Wi-Fi, which did come on I'd say four four days ago. But I know you and I were talking about that. Like we are. All the connections just were down for a long time. Yeah, even at my house where I was staying, it was uh, no no cell service, no Wi-Fi, of course, no power. Um, once I started driving out on that Monday, uh, we did we did go we were able to get some cell service, but but it's pretty it was pretty sparse at first. Um, so of course, just hard to communicate with everybody that you need to get get in touch with. In the previous video, you may have heard me discuss that uh, Irma had sustained winds between 50 and 60 miles per hour with gusts up to 71. Now being from Florida, we all know that if you're over 74, that is an actual hurricane, which was my, um, my, my fighting stance on this, is that this, this particular area did not have a hurricane. However, <laughs> look at the smile on his face. <laughs> How, however what? However, after hearing Greg's side of things, um, I, I might be changing my tune a little bit. Um, go ahead and explain your, uh, your side. This hurricane was different than any other hurricane I believe we've ever been hit by because of the, just the sheer mass of the storm. It was, I think it was, I saw statistics, it was three times larger than Hurricane Andrew. Um, so if you look at the radar, it, even though the track did go to the west and ran over Naples and Fort Myers and just kind of veered off at Tampa, 
it still was 300 miles wide, while Florida is 100, <laughs> 100 roughly miles wide. So therefore, it went it went over Florida. It, it hit Florida. That was that's my that was my uh, my argument is that it, no matter what, it was going to hit us because of just the vast greatness of it. <laughs> it was pretty gigantic, honestly. If you um, if, if you look at some of the pictures, okay, the the hurricane itself does cover the entire state of Florida. So after some thought, I am conceding to uh, Mr. Greg over here. <laughs> we had wagered this. Let's make sure it's real. I'll, I'll <laughs> so he's got to check it out, make sure it's good to go. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there was a gigantic Hurricane Irma that passed through our town and city. And uh, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate all the videos I made during the whole storm. I know a bunch of northerners and out of state people would like to see how it goes in our our viewpoint, our daily lives during hurricanes. So I appreciate you making those videos. Sometimes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being our judge. He, he was actually the uh, deciding vote and I would get daily messages from <laughs> Greg saying, well, Graham says, well, Graham says, well, Graham says, and I'm like, well, who cares what Graham says? <laughs> I'll, give um, you, I'll give you your $5 later. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair. Um, so, so yeah, uh, Graham was the deciding uh, factor in this, in this particular vote. Um, so, Thank you, Graham, for making me lose money. Well, thank you, Graham, for making me gain money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and until the next video, we'll see you later. Appreciate you stopping by. If you're interested in seeing more content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell. See you later, everyone. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>